What's up, everybody, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video where we cover nifty JavaScript topics that will come in handy when working on various JavaScript apps. And today we've got a REST operator. Now, if you watch the previous videos where we covered spread operator, no, you're not hallucinating, or I didn't make the mistake. Essentially, the syntax is exactly the same, where we have dot, dot, dot. However, of course, where we use it, well, that is already a different topic. And essentially what a REST operator does, it gathers or collects the item. Remember, when we talk about spread, essentially we spread out the items and we copy them, correct? Or in this case, we gather them back up. Now, as far as the use cases, we're going to use it when we are destructuring, as well as when we're sending them the functions. However, just keep in mind, and don't worry, I'll repeat that probably 50,000 times during this video. But when we talk about REST, we talk about function declarations. When we talk about spread, we talk about when we invoke the function. That is very, very important because, again, syntax is going to be exactly the same, but what they will do is, of course, going to be completely different. Also, keep in mind that placement is important. And, of course, I'll show you that. And be careful when you're setting up the name because a pretty common convention is using REST, but you can only use it once as far as the name collisions. Now, let's start with the structuring. So we already know that when we talk about array destructuring, we can get whatever values you would want. So if I'll start with a first and if I'll console log it, of course, in our console, I will have an apple. And I also mentioned in the video that what happens with the rest of the items. And of course, the answer is nothing. Since I'm only accessing the first item, nothing happens to the rest of them. However, now with a rest operator, here's what we can do. I can add comma, then dot, dot, dot. And then, like I said, you can name it whatever you'd want, but a pretty common convention is using a name of rest. So if I go with the rest, and now if I'll console log it, I'll see in my console that I have rest of the items. And surprise, surprise, this is an array. So essentially, I can do whatever I would want as far as array setup. I can use any method or any functionality that comes with array. Now, here are a few things that you should remember. So when we use this dot, dot, dot rest, we are collecting rest of the values. Now, that could be one value. That could be 5,000. That really depends on original array. So, for example, if I'll add here an extra item, of course, my rest array is going to get bigger. Correct? Now, also keep in mind that when you're destructuring, if you start getting more items, of course, this array will start to get smaller. So, if I go with second and then comma, now, of course, I'm grabbing the first, I'm grabbing the second, so apple and orange. However, the rest becomes smaller because now we're just getting lemon, banana, and the pear. And the same, of course, will work if I'll just remove the last one, the pear. Now I only have lemon and banana. And just to showcase that, of course, it is an array, I'm going to perform a find method so we can set up a specific fruit. Now, before we do that, let me just rename this because later I will use rest. So I would want to avoid those name collisions. So I'm going to go with rest and then off the fruits like so. Pretty explicit name, but I think we can live with that. And now let's go with specific fruits. So I'm going to go with const and then specific and then fruit. And that will be equal to rest of the fruits. Then let's use a find method. Again, we can use whichever method we would want, but I'm going to go with find. And I'll say that return a fruit if it is equal to a lemon. So if we have here a lemon, then set it up as a specific fruit. So we'll go with lemon. And then if we console log specific fruit, then of course, we should have lemon, correct? And of course we do. So the value right now is lemon. Beautiful. And similarly to how we can use a rest operator with arrays, we can also use with objects. So let's try it out. 
again, we have an object, we have name, last name and job. And then I'm destructuring only the name. So I'm accessing the name. However, what happens if we place here a dot and then dot 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 and then rest? And I'm sorry, I said dot actually. If we place here a comma and then dot 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 rest, you'll notice that now we have an object with the rest of the properties, which in our case is last name as well as job. However, if I'll change this around and if I say here job, so I'm destructuring the job, and of course, in that case, I also need to console log it. Now, of course, I have the name and last name. So again, whatever properties we would want. Just keep in mind that when we talk about objects, of course, we're looking for the properties. When we're talking about arrays, we're getting whether that is the first item, second item, or whatever. Now, also make sure that you always, always place rest here at the very end, whether we're talking about objects or arrays. So if you'll try to do this, for example, if you'll try to do dot, 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 and then rest and then job, it won't work because it doesn't make sense. Rest operator collects rest of the values. That's why it should always be placed at the end. So I'll leave this for your reference and I'll copy and paste and Let's actually set it up properly where we need to come up with whichever properties we would want. Again, in this case, it's just going to be job. And then we place our dot, dot, dot rest. And now let's take a look at how we can use a rest operator in a function. But very, very important thing that when we talk about functions, we use rest when we declare the function. We use spread when we invoke the function. And imagine an scenario where I would want to come up with a function that collects and gets the average of scores. So we go get average. And then that is, of course, my function. We'll pass here the name, whatever, Peter, John, Amanda. And then we would want to pass a test scores. Now it could be one or it could be 5,000. So that's why we'll right away set up here a REST operator. And we need to come up with a name. So, of course, I'll name this scores. And then let's cancel log two things name, then copy and paste. And we also would want to take a look at the scores. Now, let's invoke it. So, we're going to go with get average. Now, pass in person dot name, then comma, and then some dummy values. Now, before we even do anything, you'll notice that the moment we save, we should have already some kind of values in this course. Now, in this case, I made a small typo. So now, of course, everything works where I can see the name and I can see the scores. Now, scores right now is just an empty array. But that is exactly what I'm looking for, because I don't know how many I'll pass in. I could pass in five, I could pass in 3000. So in here, if I start adding these values, notice how nicely they get added to the array. So if we go, for example, with 100, now I have the scores array with these values. So whatever I passed in over here. And now, of course, we can just come up with some kind of function that calculates the average. Now, there's, of course, tons of ways how we can do that. But I think I'll use reduce just again to reiterate that it is an array. So we can do whichever array method we would want. So let's go with total. And then I'll call this item. And then I would want to return a zero meaning my initial value will be zero. And now I just want to sum them up and then divide by the length of my scores. So let's just add return total and then plus equals and we'll say item. And then, of course, like I said, we just need to divide by scores, scores and then a length. And that should give us the average value. So let's console log average or here. And of course, I have 86.5. And now let me throw you a mind grenade where, like I said, when we talk about rest operator, we're talking about where we declare the function. When we talk about the spread operator, that's where we invoke the function. So first, let me copy and paste because we'll use it. And I'll leave this one for your reference. And now let's come up with some kind of array that is just going to have some values. So test and then scores. Now, this array is going to have value of 23, 45, 67, and then 89. 
And now, of course, I would want to pass in the values from that array. However, here's the gotcha. I cannot just simply say test scores because you'll notice that right now I have the nested array, correct? I have array within the array. And of course, my functionality doesn't work anymore. So what we can do? Well, we can use spread operator. Again, in this case, we are using spread operator because we're just splitting up these values here. In the declaration, we're using the rest operator. So if I go with dot, 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 and then test scores, you'll notice how it is back to a flat array. And now, of course, my functionality works. Again, just to reiterate, rest operator does have the same syntax as spread, but unlike the spread, we're actually gathering and collecting items. We are using that in the structuring as well as functions. Just keep in mind that we're talking about function declarations. That's where we're setting up the spread operator and the placement is important, meaning it always has to be on the end. And also careful with the same name, because even though the convention is using rest, I mean, be careful of the name collisions. And of course, the last one, the one that I've already mentioned 50,000 times, rest is when we declare function and spread is when we invoke the function.